What's up hobby friends? My name is Casey and welcome to another miniature rescue. Today, we're gonna talk about a nasty orc army that I just bought off of eBay. This video is sponsored by Ravaged Star a new line of highly detailed sci-fi miniatures from the team over at Mini Wargaming, but more on that in a little bit. Orcs are some of my absolute favorite models in Warhammer, from the old stubby pewter 40k models to the new sleek Lord of the Rings inspired AOS minis. Not only that, but within the game of Warhammer, 40k and otherwise, orcs are just plain fun. The way that they play feels very narratively driven. Their orky essence can be felt through the rules written on the page. Another thing that orcs are known for is a bit of variety. There are a ton of awesome models out there and a ton of different styles that those models come in. Luckily, almost any combination is gonna be fun one way or another. Personally, I like to play orcs of the same type, where they all share the same theme and they all have the same kind of look to them. Not that there isn't a place for mixing and matching, as that is part of the fun. But when an army is super cohesive in theme and look, I like the way that shows up on the table. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at a pretty rough army of orcs that I just bought off of eBay for about 200 bucks. It was a killer deal, and I'm super excited to walk you through the process of taking these guys from eBay to the tabletop. The army list isn't too bad either. Two boxes of brutes totaling 10 models, one start collecting box that includes three pigs, 10 ard boys, and a war chanter. The iron skull boys war band, which is four models normally, but it is missing one, but they'll make for some extra nice ard boys. And last but not least, a maw crusher. What's even better is that the total price of these models new is around $382. Not bad. Okay, so we made out all right on the price and the model count isn't bad at all. The only real problem is that this army isn't actually a full 2000 points, about 11, 1200 points. Luckily though, I have a bunch of Iron Jaws stuff already, so it wasn't a huge stretch to add some models to get that number up. Some extra pigs, Ard Boys and Brutes, and we quickly hit that 2000 point mark. Now that we have a proper army, we need to take a closer look at the used models to find out why exactly were they going for so much less money. There's gotta be some reason. Really getting in there, I can see that there will be some work. A lot of the models have broken parts or missing pieces. The thing with eBay armies like this is there will almost always be some kind of work that needs to be done, but with a little bit of patience and some specific tools, you can really get something nice for a lot less money. This army has some paint on it. That's fine because we can strip that paint off. I prefer using a sonic cleaner, but a soak in a heavy degreaser for a few days can also do the trick. After the models have been run through, I can easily brush off the excess paint, revealing fresh gray plastic underneath. Once the models are stripped, we can start to treat them like they're new. The first thing I'm gonna do is take off all the little skull bits on the armor. They pop off pretty easily, and I can add these to my bits collection for something else. I really just don't like random bits placed on the model like this. It adds complexity, but in a weird way that wasn't really necessarily designed for. Sometimes they look purposeful and that's fine, but most of the time they just look like they're glued on. The models are great on their own and they don't always need that extra stuff. So for Iron Jaws specifically, I never include them. Gluing on parts that weren't attached is easy enough work, but what about some of the larger problem areas, like the Gore Grunter's ears? This part is probably the most annoying part of the entire build. The ears on these pigs are notorious for not fitting properly, and I've always found it to be the most frustrating part about building Iron Jaws, which is weird, it's so small. I imagine it like this. The last owner was trying to force these ears into place, as you do, and they either broke through the skin, causing massive blood loss, or he finally got fed up and just tossed them. Either way, I get it. I felt that pain. There's no real way around it, but to keep pushing until they snap into place. Brings us to another tool. I don't have extra ears for this guy, so I'm gonna fake it with something decorative. One of those glued on bits actually, and some green stuff to make us new non-ears and fur. In the end, this covers up that large ear gap and still looks like it fits on the model. But really, we're not gonna know until we prime everything, so we'll have to check back. There was a similar part missing on the Maw Crusher, but before I get to that, I wanna use a bunch of this green stuff to fill the gaps on the rest of these models. Most of them have actually been built pretty well, but there are some larger, more noticeable gaps on a few models here and there. So fill in the holes and set the models aside to dry. The 
The Mod Crusher does have a few issues. The topmost spikes on the wings have both broken off in shipping, an unfortunate side effect of eBay. But we're here to fix stuff anyway, so why not be happy about those extra surprises due to bad packaging? Yes, yeah, shawty. So one of the tips can be easily glued back on but the other one's gonna need a replacement. Using green stuff, I sculpt a little claw for the top of that wing. I'm actually pretty happy with the way that this ended up. If you look close, you can kind of tell that it's not proper, but once this thing is primed, I think it's gonna work just fine. The other main issue is that the contact point for the rider on top of this model. Normally, there's a belt with a chain that attaches to the dragon in order to hold that rider in place, or, you know, look like. Since that piece is gone, with no mention in the listing, of course, why would that, you know, need to be mentioned? Ever. No matter. I have some ideas on how to fix this. Using green stuff, I fill in the hole and I put a skull over it to act as a kind of loincloth, or whatever you want to call it. Then I take some small jewelry chain and cut it to length so it will fit around the dragon's neck and the waist of the orc boss. I don't want to attach the boss to the dragon now since we still have to paint, but I know this is going to work once we attach him. So I'll leave these to dry and move on to the next step. Priming will really show us what everything looks like, so let's get some paint on these orcs and see what we have. Ravage Star is a new line of highly detailed sci-fi miniatures for use in your favorite tabletop games. This crowdfunding campaign is for the first faction, the Veil Touched, and includes corrupted soldiers hell-bent on destroying any and every planet within their vast reach. The great news is that this campaign is already funded. Not only will there be a massive set of really cool chaotic miniatures, but a boatload of reinforcements as well. One of the things that I like the most about this campaign is that these models are not 3D printable STLs. They will be shipped, plastic miniatures. So you don't have to worry about what's next with these guys. Just open the box of minis and get to work. I got a chance to get my hands on a few of these miniatures and I've got to say they are really nice. This week, I painted up a really cool model called Valara. She's a really cool character model that I saw in the lineup and really wanted to paint. There's a strength in the pose, and I like the energy being given off by the way she's holding up a gun to protect her hall of magical objects. I just like the way it looks, and I really wanted to give it a go. I ended up doing a lot of fun wet blending on this model because of the nice cloth everywhere, and there were fun opportunities to do a variety of metallics. I also decided that this model would definitely be suited for some red hair and have a crazy look in her eyes. This model was really fun to paint and I can't wait to tackle more of these Ravage Star miniatures. You definitely don't want to miss these models when they ship out. They have been fantastic to look at and even more of a joy to paint up. Check out the links in the description below and follow the campaign so you don't miss out on a ton of amazing miniatures. A massive thank you to Mini Wargaming and Ravage Star for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to those other minis. It's incredible how unifying a single coat of paint can be. Everything is covered up and you can start to imagine what these models are actually gonna look like. This is also the time when we can see if the green stuff worked and our gaps are actually filled, as well as make any final touch-ups we may need before committing to putting real paint on these models. Looking at some of the models that were definitely worse off, the green stuff and bits seem to have really made a difference. I'm actually kinda liking that weird headpiece on the Gorgrunta that was missing its ears and the green stuff seems to have blended in nicely with the fur. The other Gorgrunters look fine too, but then I noticed that one of them was missing several pieces of armor and some teeth. I went through my orc bits and found a couple of extra armor pieces that should work really well for this pig. I did have to cut away quite a bit of plastic to make it work, but in the end, I think this guy will look just fine, especially once we get the same kind of paint that the other armor panels are gonna have. All right, so the hard part of this project is pretty much over. There are still things to do before we get to painting, but we're really on the other side of this rescue, on the downhill side, and it feels pretty good. In order to maximize painting time and get this army on the table quickly and with good results, we need to solidify a plan. Normally at this time, I would head to Instagram to see what other people are doing with their iron jaws, but instead I'm gonna be painting something that I actually already know, red skinned orcs. 
I painted a group of these guys what seems like forever ago, at least a couple of years. And I think it's the perfect paint job to get these guys done quickly and to a good standard. These particular models have lava bases as well, but I really don't want to detach every model in the army in order to make more. So I'm going to go with something a little bit different. I went ahead and picked up a large bucket of cracked earth paste for this project. So there should be enough to get cracked bases for everyone. The other thing I want to do is bring in some plant life to break up that color and texture. I decided to use the large Ma Crusher base as my test. That way I can play around in a few areas and see what combos I like. Worst comes to worst, I can throw the base in a sauna cleaner and everything should come off and I can start over. I started by cutting some foam into rock formations. This pink insulation foam is my favorite for making structures and rocks with. It cuts easily with a hobby knife and you can easily rip it apart to get nice jagged rocks. I plan on using small bits of this for the most of the bases. Maybe doing half cracked earth and half rocks and grass, but let's see how it looks on this one. Once the rocks are in place, I go ahead and prime the whole thing to really lock it in. Next up, I paint in the rocks with a variety of grays, keeping it pretty dark so that a dry brush highlight will show up nicely and give us that nice rocky texture. After that, I'm going to put down a pretty thick coat of that cracked earth texture and let it dry. The color of this texture paint is a little bit bright, so I'm going to come back in with some brown and cover it all up and then dry brush that to bring out that texture again. Finally, we will get some glue on the base and put a variety of grass all over just to kind of see what looks good. I think this is a pretty good plan for the army, although I think I'll wash down the cracked earth rather than painting over it. That way we get a bit of a darker color and fill in those cracks nicely. Other than that, I think a variety of these materials will contrast with rusty red orcs nicely. That pretty much covers the initial steps to rescuing an eBay army. It may not always seem like it on this channel, but it does take a good amount of time to clean and prep these models. More often than not, I just talk about the sonic cleaner and kind of leave it there. But this time, I thought it'd be more fun to explore these steps in a little more depth on a larger project like this, and I hope that you got some enjoyment out of it along the way. Eventually, we will be painting these models up on the channel, and I think it's going to be a pretty fun project. So consider subscribing and sticking around for that. Thank you again for joining me on another miniature rescue. If you like something about this video, please consider liking, sharing and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey and I will see you in the next video.